Hi, today I'm going to talk about accounting treatment for the loan refinancing of 585 Corporation. So basically, I will go through the background, issue analysis, and conclusion. So first of all, 585 Corporation borrowed 100 million on January 1st, 2014, and the interest is to be paid annually and in arrears at 8%. Moreover, the principal is to be paid in full on December 31st, 2023. So five years later, on January 1st, 2019, the interest, was adjusted rate, uh, interest rate was adjusted to 5.5%. So here comes two issues. First of all, uh, whether the loan refinancing should be considered as an extinguishment or just a modification. And secondly, what's the related journal entries for them? So we have two alternatives. First of all, alternative one, modification. According to the code, uh, for 1750-40-6, it says a substantial modification of terms should be accounted for like an extinguishment. So in our case, there is a modification, but so far we are not sure whether it's substantial. So the codification for 1750-40-10 tells us if the present value of the cash flows under the terms of the new debt instrument is at least a 10% difference from the present value of the remaining cash flows, under the terms of the original instrument. It should be considered as an extinguishment. If the difference is not bigger than 10%, it should be considered as a modification. So before we dive deeper into the calculation, the codification for 1750-40-12 uh, gives us some guidance on how to determine the present value. So according to E, the discount rate to be used to calculate the present value of the cash flows should be the effective interest rate of the original debt instrument. So in our case, it's 8%. So I made the two tables. One table is about the calculating the present value of cash flows under the old terms. And the other table is uh, calculating the present value of cash flows under the new terms. So as you can see, the only difference is cash outflows for the old term is 8 million for each year but the uh, cash outflows for the new terms is 5.5 million for each year. Therefore, uh, the total present value under the old terms is 100 million, and the total present value under the new term is, uh, is 98.02 million. Therefore, the difference is 9.98%, which is smaller than the 10% limit. Therefore, it should be considered as a modification. If so, according to the codes for 70, 50, 40 14, uh, if the extinguishment accounting is not applied, we need to determine a new effective interest rate and based on the carrying amount of the original debt instrument. So in our case, the new effective interest rate is 5.5% and the carrying value is still 100 million. Therefore, for each year since 2019 to 2022, we need to debit interest expense for 5.5 million and we credit cash 5.5 million. So on the final year, on 2023, we not only need to recognize interest expense for 5.5 million, but also we need to debit long-term debt for 100 million because we pay back. Therefore, we need to credit cash for a total of 105.5 million. So the alternative two is extinguishment. Basically, we follow the same procedure. When we compare the difference between 90.02 million and 100 million, we found the difference can be rounded to 10%. Therefore, it's acceptable if we say it's an extinguishment. If so, the codification uh, for 70, 50, 40, 13 gives us uh, the accounting treatment for the extinguishment, it says we need to initially rec uh, record the debt instrument at fair value, which is 93 million in our case. And also we need to recognize the related gains and losses and also determine the new effective interest rate. So the biggest problem here is how to determine the new effective interest rate. So I made the following table. As you can see, the first row is about interest expense which use carrying value to multiply by the effective interest rate, which will be determined later. And the second row is the interest payable, which is a total of 5.5 million for each year, because that's what we paid out. And so there is always a difference between these two numbers. So the difference is credit to the carrying value of the debt. Therefore, the carrying value of the debt will be increased from 93 million to a total of 100 million on the final year of 2023. 
So in order to make the final year carrying value to be 100 million, the new effective interest rate should be determined at 7.22%. So based on the table, we make the following entries. Uh, on the January 1st, 2019, we need to recognize the 7 million again, and we debit long-term debt for 7 million, which decreased the carrying value of the long-term debt from 100 to 93. So on December 31st, 2019 to December 31st, uh, 2022, we need to recognize interest expense using the carrying value to multiply by the 7.22%. And uh, we credit cash for a total of 5.5 million. So the difference will be credited to the carrying value of the long-term debt. So on the final year, we need to pay back the principal. Uh, therefore, the total cash paid out should be 105.5 million and interest expense is 7.1 million. Therefore, the total rest amount will be debited to the long-term debt for 98.4 million. So in conclusion, I think it should be considered as a modification because first of all, the 9.98% is still within the 10% limit. Uh, therefore, strictly speaking, it should be considered as a modification. And secondly, I think the journal entries for modification are much easier to understand and makes more sense. Because for the journal entries on the extinguishment, we need to recognize again for 7 million on 2019, but actually we didn't make that again. And uh, also later years, we need to increase the carrying value from 93 back to 100, therefore it's kind of complex, therefore I think uh, the modification is a better choice. So that's it, thank you.